Recalibrate. Okay, synchronization in three, two, one. Synchronization complete. When is now? Aria and I now both agree on when now, now. is, but what about you and me? As I'm filming this episode, my present is technically your past, and your present moment is technically in my future. If I was there next to you right now, now. we'd of course both agree on what now is. Don't, don't touch me. And it would be after some excruciatingly painful small talk. I'm bringing up these differences because my question for you today is, does the universe at large have a now? Okay, nothing? Or is the present moment just a matter of perception? Now. Okay, let's recalibrate again, jeez. Now entering the facility. In 1989, the legendary physicist Robert Penrose presented a paradox to the public. He said, consider two nerds very interested in the goings-ons in the galaxy nearest our own, Andromeda. And one day, these two nerds are walking past each other on the street. And they say, hello, nerd friend. I would like to query you as to what is happening right now in the present of Andromeda if they had amazing telescopes and didn't have to wait 2.5 million years for the light information to get to them. The moving nerd looks at Andromeda and says, Hark, stationary brethren, I see aliens and their elder council is debating whether or not to invade Earth right now. Ooh, voice. But the stationary nerd looks at Andromeda and says, Nary, you fool. They have already deliberated and their alien fleet is on the way right now to shoot laser beams at our faces. The paradox here is that it is theoretically possible for these two nerds to disagree, for one nerd to apparently see into the future of the other. But how can two simultaneous observations of the present be different? Well, to explain that, I need to get changed. Aria, activate Carl Sagan mode. How should we define now? How do we suss out what is truly simultaneous? Well, to figure that out from scratch, we must first consider the universe not just at one time, but at all times. I didn't have a turtleneck, shut up. Suppose that we have a camera, a camera of the imagination, as Carl might have. And this camera allows us to magically take a snapshot of the entire universe. Inside of this snapshot, in all of three-dimensional space, everything should be simultaneous. For example, me talking to you, a student on the other side of the world doing their homework, and Blorpon from the Artemis Cluster, who's a good friend of mine, hashing Grebos all day like he usually does. They are delicious. Now, if we were to keep taking Snapshots eventually would have this abstracted view of all of space and time that we could look at and piece together. Now, many science communicators call this the universal loaf of space-time, but that sounds weird and stupid and makes you think of bread. I'm hungry. You shouldn't be eating as many carbs as you are. Shut up. I'm going to call this totalitime. Every moment that the universe has had, is having, or will have. In this higher dimensional view of totalitime, all time and all events really do exist. There's a snapshot where everything is simultaneous for you, your present, but the past here isn't just a memory, and the future isn't uncertain. It's all there. Every single point in time equally as valid as your present. It all happens. Now, you might be thinking then, if this eternalist view of the universe is true, why do all slices, as we define them, have to look like this? Why doesn't a snapshot of the universe look like this, or even this? Well, that's a good question. Deactivate Carl Sagan mode. Different nows is the very heart of the Andromeda paradox, a paradox that may be impervious to common sense, but not to Einstein's theory of relativity. Now, now. Oh, come on. What is, what is going on with you today? Fun fact. The Andromeda galaxy is on a collision course with the Milky Way. It's a fun fact because that's more than 4 billion years out and you are definitely not going to make it. But whether we're here or not, the Milky Way and Andromeda are going to crash together. However, when this happens, it's not going to be the cosmic calamity that you may expect. You see, space is big. It's vast. It's bigger than vast. We don't have words to describe just how big space is and how large the distance between individual stars are. So when you have Andromeda with literally trillions of stars moving at 100 kilometers per second towards the Milky Way when they finally interact, there's unlikely to be a single 
solar collision. Not one. If we were still around in the solar system, we probably wouldn't even notice this event happening. As a wise man once said, whoa. Now, as we explained in our episode about the spaceship's paradox, how you move through space, relativistically speaking, can affect how you move through time. More specifically, if you move really fast through space, approach the speed of light, you move less in time. This fact brings us back to our view of totality time, and now we should track our two Andromeda-interested nerds again. In totality time, we will consider moving from left to right as moving from the past to the future. So we have our stationary nerd and our moving nerd. Let's watch what happens as time evolves. Time presses onward, and for our stationary nerd, now should look like our slices from before. This is their plane of simultaneity, where everything in this slice can be considered to be happening at the same time. For our moving nerd, however, who is moving through space and therefore moving through less time, their plane can't be moving in the same way, can it? It must be angled. Without getting into too much college-level physics here, the plane of simultaneity must be angled for moving observers because of the nature of the speed of light. From both theory and experiment, we know that the speed of light remains the same, no matter the reference frame. For this to be true for moving observers who could look at something and disagree on the speed of it, time and space must then shift to accommodate this universal speed limit. And how much time and space shifts depends on just how quickly you're going, how close you're getting to the speed of light. If we go back to our paradox then, we can observe that the plane of simultaneity for the moving nerd actually includes a present view of Andromeda that is in the past of the stationary nerd. Two apparently simultaneous observations, except one sees aliens and the other sees an alien invasion, MBD. And we can even calculate the size of this shifting effect. But to show you how, I must escape to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! I'm Tim Curry from Command and Conquer. Andromeda is what astronomers call very far away, 2.5 million light years away, in fact. And so in our view of totality time, Andromeda will also be very far away from our nerds. Now, when you walk past someone on the street, your space-time shifting will hardly be anything because when you're walking, you're not even close to the speed of light. But if your plane angle of simultaneity changes just fractions of a degree, it can really add up somewhere really far away, like Andromeda, which is 24 million quadrillion meters away. So if we use an equation, oh, like this one, which takes into account time dilation, we plug in how far Andromeda is away from Earth, we can see that if you're just walking past someone else at one foot per second, which is hardly even a stroll, your view of the present in Andromeda could differ by as much as a full Earth day. And if one nerd was going as fast as I am in this awesome spaceship, admit it, their view of the present moment in a galaxy far away could differ by literally years. And Kyle, I hear you asking in this tone of voice, why is there an equation floating in outer space? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Aria, take us in. The differences between the nows of different observers is called the relativity of simultaneity, and it solves the Andromeda paradox. Because of the immutable speed of light, two relatively moving observers will never actually agree on what the present moment is. They can't. This isn't a paradox. It's two equally valid assessments of the present moment from different perspectives. And because of this, it doesn't really make any physical sense in the first place to talk about the now of you in something very far away because of the speed of light and how information travels. So when is now? Well, that depends on who you ask. Until next time. Now exiting the facility.
Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. Today, I especially want to recognize research assistant Solomon DeBerry and visiting scholar Jack Akers. Private eye. If you want to join the facility, if you want to get on the staff and join the nearly 1,200 nerds who every day are coming up with episode ideas for me, talking to me in the Discord, having their own game nights, D&D games, trivia nights, and Commander League, and radio stations, and all the other perks, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill right now and get on the staff. And if you support the facility just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds of you, so I don't know how I'm going to pass the... T Look, I'm not going to sugar sugarcoat it. This stuff is hard to understand, and when I was re-wrapping my mind up around all of this uh, relativity stuff, some videos by my colleague Minute Physics were very, very helpful, who did an entire course on relativity and simultaneity and all that stuff, so I'd recommend those videos. Oh. Still so much more. I hope nothing weird happens when I leave. Just your friendly neighborhood TI-89 here. Remember to shut off your calculator when you're not using it to save battery, even though the batteries decrease by just about 1% a month. I still would mighty appreciate it. Thank you, and thanks for watching. I'm so, I'm so glad nothing weird happened. Thanks for watching.